Um, when I started my PhD back then, long time ago, I was talking with my supervisor, the guy at your left, and uh, the guy asked me a very simple question. He said, hey, are you from the area of micro, Andy? And I thought, hmm, I'm an electronic engineer. I work on microelectronics. So you know, everything related to microchips and all this stuff. So from all that, I think from, I'm from the area of micro. So I replied, yeah. Then uh, my supervisor asked me, are you related with solid state? And uh, I thought microelectronics has everything to do with silicon technology and microchips again, and all the physics that are used for describing this stuff are called solid state physics. So honestly, I know something about solid state. So I reply, yeah. Yeah, something like that. And he said, okay, great, you know, take that fungus and produce this enzyme. And I said, what? Wait, 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 wait. what are you talking about? You told me that you're from the area of micro. I said, yeah, I'm from the area of microelectronics. I was guessing about microbiology. But, but you told me that you're related with solid state. I said, yeah, solid state physics. Uh, I was talking about solid state fermentation. It's a way of producing and culturing a fungus to produce something interesting. There is this nice early measures type of glassware, you know, and they are culturing and producing something great. I was from microelectronics, I was completely lost. Okay, well, I think we have a problem, you know? That day, I felt that I was lost. It was not in the right place, I was not in the right moment. It was a complete failure, you know? It felt strange. I remember that that day, I said, you know, I have no clue what I'm, I'm doing here. You know, I'm not in the right place, I have no idea what I'm doing here. Four years after, when I was finishing my PhD, I was still asking me the same question. <laughs> okay, in any case, uh, uh, I discovered that there were a lot of disciplines, a lot of different things that happened when you mix knowledge, you know, mix know-how from different fields. And actually, the first thing that I had to learn was to talk in different languages, more than the other person. and and. That day, this phrase came to me, you know, when you have a lot of know-how, you have a lot of power. And with great power comes a great number of languages. And that is it. That's the phrase of my life. So uh, when I returned to here to do my research and to uh, create my own research group, I, I understood that I needed to create a different model something new, something that allowed me to introduce people from different fields and to make them able to communicate and to work together without having problems like the ones I had. So I thought about three, let's say a three path model, we produce people from different fields. So the first type of people, and I will use the previous speakers as examples, I will, I will say that Sami, Sami, great, 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 great person will say that he is a researcher of the state of the art. So these people in this group, they have a high risk of failure. See, failure is already included. 70% of the things they do, they do it wrong. Not because they want it, but 70% of the things they try to do turns out in something that solves something completely different. And we're aware of that. But these people need a long-term formation. They have to, to, they need a lot of work to do on, in their developments. Takes a lot of time, long-term. So let's say Sami, who is a researcher, and we ask Sami to produce cocoa, a chocolate drink, that, that make people cry when they drink it. Not because it's hot, you know, which is normal. It's uh, more like uh, they're, they're drinking chocolate and because of like a biological or physical or a chemical reaction, they started to cry just because it was meant for that. And Samir looks on the internet, he's pretty good at that. And he sees there's nothing about that. There's no chocolate that makes people cry. 
So he has to do something new. So I, I give him two cups, two mugs, you know, cups. So he has to prepare chocolate every day, but at the end of the day, he has to wash these cups because they are dirty. But washing cups is not part of his job. He has to do it, but this is not part of his job. He's losing time by doing this. So here comes the second group or second part, development of equipment and technology. These people are not trying to create something inexistent. They are trying to create something that fits our needs. It's like our own IT department. And their risk of, risk of failure is not that high, it's medium. Formation is midterm and their development take midterm. Let's say not long, not that short. So let's say that, that uh, Neil is part of our department of development of equipment and one day he sees that Sammy is dealing with these caps that he doesn't know what to do. You know, he has to wash them every day. He creates something great, something new. We will call it the cup washing machine, something completely new. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, of course, we already say it. It's going to be, it's going to fit perfectly for our needs. So now, Sammy starts using this machine to wash cups and now he can focus on what he's meant to do, chocolate. So he has more time. We suppose that he's going to create a lot more chocolate. The truth is that he's going to spend more time on Facebook, but anyway. But one day Sammy comes really happy, you know. Hey, you know, I got something. Remember, 70% of failure. I got something. I created a tea, an infusion. A tea that makes people laugh. So, okay, he's going to notice it. That's failure. So, okay, Sammy, how's your chuckling going? Well, it's okay. Uh, but then he says, okay, uh, you know, I came with this tea. So here comes the third group. Okay, good. Industrial and market application people. These people take the invention and be between two and three weeks they learn from the researcher and the developer how to do <coughs> this. Sorry. How to do this tea and not actually just the tea, how to do the tea, how to produce with uh, pro from this. So it's an expert already in two, three weeks on how to. Do you know, it's the energy field. <laughs> so, uh, uh, this will, in two or three weeks, learn how to produce this tea. Highly trained on that and how to use our own equipment to do that. But their aim is to change that into a real product. So their risk of failure is pretty low because everything is already existing. Their formation takes shortly, but their development has to be on short time as well. So let's say that we create something great, uh, like a depression candy, you know, out from the tea. And from that, we all get paid because we're going to sell it. And that's wonderful because these people are never going to produce something that is going to be sold. This comes really nice in theory. Let's see how it works actually in real life. So this is one of our examples. One time we decided to start reading about this uterine cancer, this uh, problem that a lot of women have and is related with the human papilloma virus. This virus, uh, uh, you can detect it. I mean, there's plenty of very standardized techniques to do it in the lab. But we wanted to create something new. So we took these people from research, from the state of the art research, and they started designing what we are going to call a biosensor. Biosensor is a device that can detect the differences of the virus and is going to use something that we call antibodies. Something fantastic and we're going to immobilize them, we're going to deposit them onto nanogold surfaces which is very nice, uh, very nice and they are going to try to study the immobilization procedure, how to stick them correctly, how much of everything they need to place, how is the detection and we want to read that detection not from color, not from chemical reaction, but electrically because we, we want to read it with the electronics, you know. We are from the electronics department, so. But it has to be very reproducible. At the same time, people from the development of equipment and technology started creating what we are going to call the microsystem. It's a platform that holds the biosensor. In this case, this platform can hold 98 sensors, biosensors. 
and they wanted to, to make a system to measure it easily, but it has to be very adaptable and highly reproducible. When we did that, the people from industrial and market application took the invention and the technology we produced and started and understanding how to lower the cost, how to package this in a correct way, and after they packaged, they tested with real samples. And these real samples uh, were from actual real women. And we saw that everything were fine, we were so happy, and we published it, and you know, scientists, we wanted that. We hope, we thought it was a success. But then, these people from market and industrial application went to the market again and started asking people if they like it. And the ans answer was no, we don't like that thing. Because people from the lab said, you know, if in a slide of glass I, I have 98 sensors, if I mess one, I'm going to mess them up all, almost 100 samples. So it's so inconvenient. So we started studying it again and we saw that it was home application, the the thing that we wanted. So these people from industrial market application called the uh, people from research and development to design something new. And we came out with an idea of a portable device where you can put just four sensors, so three replicas in a blank, a control, to be sure that the person has or not the human papilloma virus. And we put it back and we send it again to research because these people didn't only want to have this device that you can put your sample, go to the bathroom, take your sample, put it in, and get your results, but they also wanted it to be plugged into the cell phone, your mobiles, to have more detailed information. From this detailed information, you can even send this information to your doctor if you want. So now, the device looks like that. We already have the business plans made. We already know how much it costs but not only the product, but the technology in case we want to sell it. Now we already have a brand for that. So if, if you see all this chart together, you can see that researchers are just keeping on innovation and finding new ways to solve problems, while people from development of equipment and technology are there to standardize measurements and uh, also the techniques and facilities can be improved. And people from an industrial and market application are meant to produce products out of inventions, but not to use our labs, but to use the supply chain of the local market to produce them. Once you do all that, you realize that the synergy of the different disciplines makes a difference. And when you have all this, you start to feel that you are part of something. And when you are part of something, then you're happy. And believe me, if you're happy and you are doing what you really want to do in life, failure is never something negative. Thank you very much.